Good evening. As we open up the Isaiah chapter 59, we invite you to Hayward Ministry as we go through the Bible. I would say chapter by chapter, but some chapters we stop. Isaiah 59, James is the 59th book of the Bible. Verse, this whole entire chapter, it's the wicked man. And the answer finds in verse 20. Now again, in general of Isaiah, the Old Testament, it is written to the Jewish person. But we can apply the application to today to the wicked person. <clears throat> and as we read through chapter 59, we would hope that we wouldn't find any Christians involved in this work. And yet, sorry, we do. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. There is no one ever that God would turn away. Any sinner that comes seeking repentance, seeking a pardon, <coughs> guilty of their sins, God in no wise will turn them out. I've heard a story one time of an elderly woman just, and, the, and the, the pastor described her, you know, she's frail looking. And he was dealing with her soul, and she told him for what she has done, didn't mention, don't need to mention, that God could never forgive her. And you know, he looked at the woman, and he said, what on earth could this woman have done? And the question is not what she has done, but who taught her the nonsense that God is not able? Neither his ear heavy that he cannot hear. We don't have a God that's a statue with ears that can't hear. We have a God that is able to listen and help and reaches out to sinners. Now, if you got a sinner who doesn't want to have anything to do with God, who outright rejects God, and does not have a repentant heart, but a stone-cold heart, God will reach out to that person if he wants to get saved. God will hear that person if he wants to repent. But wicked, bound in wickedness and in violence. You say God listens. God saves those that are, that are wicked and violent, doesn't? So he, he has to listen. But your iniquities. Your iniquities have separated between you and your God. God won't have anything to do with me. Oh, because you're iniquity. You're God. Now again, that's the nation of Israel. But also it's written in the Old Testament, prepared to meet thy God. And as far as the church age, we can reach out to people and say, hey, listen. You're going to face your God one day. I don't care if you don't believe in your God. Your God is God, the Father of the Bible of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I don't believe. Well, he's still your God. And you have no relationship, no fellowship, and as a Christian, if you are in your iniquities. And you can be saved and not ever lose your salvation. You won't lose it, but you can lose the fellowship with God. By your sins. And your sins had hid his face from you. And for the Christian, and for the, the Israelites who are God's people, and for the Christian that are God's people, your sins, whether you be an individual Christian or a body of believers of Christians, your sins, God says, I ain't looking at you. I ain't observing you. 
And yet the Bible says the eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. But his eyes are closed to those who are open in sin. Now there are Christian who has, every Christian has got a sin they battle. And they do it and they're in tears and they're sorry. And then they do it again and they're not, you know, they want to do it. And then the next time they do it, they get a little remorse and then they do it again. And then they get, oh. And that's not what this verse is talking about. It's talking about you just openly in sin. You're open in iniquity. And God says, hey, I'm backing off. And we go into the road of backsliding for the Christian. We go into backsliding with the nation of Israel. That he will not hear. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Verse 1. His ear heavy that he cannot hear. That he will not hear. So God does close his ears to people in iniquity and sin. When you're not repenting, you not want to do right, when you don't want to get right with God. And I said, we battle sin. But we're just living in open sin and Christian too. And we're just happy in our sin. And we enjoy our sin. And God's like, I'm not looking. <coughs> I'm not listening to you. And woe be to the churches like that is open sin. And they pray and they reach out to God. For your hands are defiled with blood, murder, killing. And that's the nation of Israel. We read earlier, a couple of chapters ago, a couple of days ago, we read about they were killing their children. They are sacrificing their children to Molech. They are killing the prophets of God. They are killing people for their property. They are killing people because we don't like them. And they killed the Lord Jesus Christ because they didn't like him. And they killed all the apostles except for John because they didn't like him. And they killed Christians and they killed Jews because they didn't like him. You'll find some of these men, in, men written in, in Hebrews chapter 11. The great faith chapter. Your fingers with iniquity. Now we're going to see chapter 59 from head to toe. This is not somebody who has got one. Uh, I don't know. One sin in their life that, you know, they battle, they don't battle, they battle, they don't battle. They know they're not supposed to be doing it. Sometimes they enjoy doing it. And then sometimes they just, we're not talking about that. We're talking about from head to toe, they're just wicked and vile. And this is the nation of Israel. This is God's people. Woe be, but can't say no Christian can be like this. But it's possible. Can a Christian kill somebody? Yes. Can he lose his soul? No. Forgive me. Dry throat. You're not going to lose your soul, and you can murder somebody. I guarantee somewhere along the line, a Christian has murdered and has taken blood. After salvation. I dealt with a man one time in prison, and he was in prison for murder. Then he got saved. That's under the blood. Do you know that John writes in the epistle, if a man hates his brother... Somebody in church or your physical brother, he's a murderer. Did you read that? Do you know your thoughts can put you as a murderer? Oh, I, I've never stabbed anybody. I've never shot anybody. Well, if I buy a gun, I'll shoot him dead. You're a murderer. Oh, I'm going to kill my boss. One of these days, I'm going to kill my boss. You thought about it. You're a murderer. Well, prove it, Sally. Come on. Whosoever looking upon a woman to lust after his heart has already committed adultery with her. 
And if I look at a woman like, whoo yeah, all right. And God said, that's adultery. What about when you are angry with your neighbor, you're angry with your boss, you're angry with a co-worker enough to say, I'm going to kill him. I'd love to kill him to get that job. Oh, if I was boss of this company, I tell you, I would drive, I'd drive him to the ground. And what we don't realize, and what I have never heard in a message out of any churches that I've been in, I've never heard the message of our thoughts makes us guilty. We had a run in today again with the police and the vendors at the farmers market. He said, "Do you wish to hate them? No, I don't hate them. I pray for their soul." But I'm starting to pray, Lord God, send them somewhere else. And I've seen God send them other places. I don't want them dead. I want them to get saved. Your lips have spoken lies. Man, this almost sounds like our government. If you knew what was going on behind our our leaders of our nation, you say our people, uh, the government wouldn't kill anybody. What do you do with abortion, making it legal? What do you do? If somebody makes alcohol legal, and somebody get and lives are killed, families are destroyed because of alcohol because it's made legal. What about smoking in Florida? We got this campaign in Florida. I don't know anywhere else. You know, quit smoking. You can quit smoking. Call this number. We'll quit smoking. Why don't you just stop smell? St Why don't you just stop selling the tobacco product? And the fact is that you got these commercials, you know tobacco kills, and you allow it. And if you allow tobacco, if you allow alcohol, if you allow abortion, and you fund abortion, you fund alcohol, you fund tobacco, and you get money from abortion, you get money from alcohol, you get money from tobacco, you are a murderer. And the Bible says, thou shalt not kill. Well, uh, you know, I, I'm just a clerk and I run the cashier and I, I sell alcohol. And you may sell alcohol to somebody who's going to ruin their liver or ruin somebody else. You are guilty. You may be blowing your secondhand smoke into somebody who's going to get lung disease and they get lung disease from <coughs> secondhand smoke. You're guilty. Let's hear some messages like that out of the pulpits. Lies. You know out of the lies, the, the, out of the pulpits, there's lies. You know out of the Christian mouth, there's lies. Everybody wants to know you don't want the truth. You want the truth, you come with us down to the farmer's market. And we'll show you how much they want the truth. Lies. Don't you speak lies. Your tongue has muttered perverseness. Things that ought not to be said. Filthy jokes, filthy language, filthy. Talk about your spout in the way they do. That's filthy, that's perverse. None calls for justice. <laughs> Why would they not call for justice? Because they would be found guilty and justice would be against them. They want the truth. No, they don't. Because the truth will condemn them. They don't cry for proper justice because proper justice will put them in the hot seat. Nor any plea is for truth. All right. Let me give me one. I'll speak about what I know. Today, erase the hate. And today, you know, I write every Saturday morning, I write a little thing about witnessing. So today I wrote about hate. And the Bible says to the Christian that goes out there, the world's going to hate you. That if nobody hates, everybody loves you, you're not doing your ministry correct. All right? The world's going to hate you, and we've seen it last few weeks in the farmer's market. But that same people, those people, they will cry peace and a race to hate. And we want the truth. And we bring them the Bible, we bring them Jesus Christ, and they hate us. They don't want to hear it. 
and they want to stop it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You want the truth, you want to erase the hate, and you want peace. And when a man brings a Bible, you hate him, you give him unpeace, you fight him, and then you turn around and say, we hate you. Well, we didn't say hate. Listen, call the cops and trying to get rid of us and cussing filthy mouth of perversion. That's hate. And then you get upset. They come up to me, judge not, they should be judged. I say, you're judging me. And that happened last week, and that guy flew off the handle. How dare I answer him? And then today, when I'm dealing with the police, and I throw my five cents in there, oh, you're yelling, you're getting all set, and there's no, 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 I'm not. You see, the world is, we can throw at you anything we want to throw at you, but you can't throw it back at us. That's not the truth. That's not peace. They trust in vanity, and vanity is nothing. What is nothing? Oh, sports. What sports going to be in the eternal life of heaven or hell? Nothing. Politics. What's politics? There is no Republicans and Democrats in New Jerusalem. There is no White House in hell. Movies, television, theater, and... What are they in the future? Money, cash, you know, stocks and all that. What is that after the heavens and earth pass away? What is that? And that the only thing that is not vain is everything done and the love of Jesus Christ. I mean, somebody said, you know, you can't take it with you. Well, there's something you can take to heaven. What's that? Lost souls that got saved. And then silver, precious stones, and silver and gold that you earn by serving the Lord Jesus. That goes with you. Everything else is vain, wood, hay, and stubble for the Christian. And for the lost man, the books are open. And where is your name in the Lamb's Book of Life? I don't see it. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But Lord, I gave money to charity. I gave everything. I, and I, I, I fed people at the soup kitchen. And I helped people. And I did this. And your name is not in the Lamb's Book of Life. Speak lies. Look at that. Lies again. <coughs> lies again. Listen, let me tell you, if I ever said I'd never lied, I'd be a liar. I've lied. I've had circumstances where, where, where a lie would get me out of trouble, and I lied, and I've had to go back to that person and say, you know what? Uh, I lied. <laughs> Sorry, I wanted to get out of trouble. They conceived mischief. <laughs> Conceive is to bring forth mischief. This is the wicked man. This is the person you don't want in heaven for all each other. Everybody's going to You don't want this person in heaven. He'll be all over again, wars and battles. And bring forth iniquity. Those iniquity shows up again. This is the world. This is the earth. This is the place that where many Christians love and are sincere about. They hatch cockroaches. And that's an adder, a poison, egg. And what comes from eggs is, is the creature that lays the eggs, and it's poison. And weave spider's web. What, do you, what is used for a spider's web for a human? Nothing. All right, for the spider, he catches bugs. All right, it, it, it's an insecticide for, for humans. Well, that's it. It has no value. He that eateth the egg dieth. It brings forth death. And that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. <laughs> There's a snake, a poisonous snake. Their webs 
shall not become garments. You don't take a spider's web and make a suit, a uniform, or clothing. Neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are the works of iniquity. The Bible says it in, in, in Revelation 21. Well, go there, Revelation 21. What about their works? Revelation chapter 20, excuse me. Revelation 20, verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. All right, go back over to Isaiah. What's Isaiah say? Their works are the works of iniquity. You ain't going to heaven. Now, there are some at the judgment seat of Christ that will go to heaven. I believe the Old Testament saints and those that are not, not in the church will be. I'm, I'll tell you right now, I believe there will be people saved at the, at the judgment seat of Christ. I'm at the great white throne judgment. The books will be open. They will be found able to go, again, through the blood of Jesus Christ. But most of those people at the great white throne judgment, <coughs> excuse me, I apologize. Their works are judged. Those works are iniquity. And what does Jesus say? Depart from me, ye workers of a... Scripture with scripture. Iniquity. I never knew you. Look at that. And the act of violence is in their hands. You realize that's, that's why God called Noah. There was violence in the land. There was violence in the world. We got violence running around today. I seen today, or I seen yesterday, one of my Facebook thing, you know, the evils of child labor. And it had, you know, a, a young child who would be working the, the mills and all that. But when we had child labor, we didn't have children shooting. Now, correct me, I'm wrong, but I think they said a six-year-old girl the other day went into the school and started shooting people up. I think, something like that. Man, if there's anything wrong with the truth and all that, they ought to look at this generation and the past generation and tell this generation, you need to shut up because you don't know what you're doing because it is worse. Get the children a time out and, you know, don't, and Dr. Spook says, don't slap the child and all that and give him a little kiss when he goes to bed and he pulls a gun and shoots you. There's nothing wrong with violent video games or shooting and all that. No, no, okay. Their feet run to evil. That's Proverbs 1. Romans 3.15. And yet, Romans chapter 10 says that God loves the feet or the foot of the man that has the good tidings, the gospel. And there are Christians out there who are not carrying the gospel and their feet are carrying evil in the name of Jesus Christ, of course. And they make haste to shed innocent blood. There's the blood. There's the murder again. Notice how these sins are repeating. And this is the condition of the nation of Israel. In the time of Isaiah, and it's going to get even worse in the time of Jeremiah, and then Babylon's going to come. Do you realize that people don't like me saying this, and I don't care what you don't like? Do you realize the Catholic Church that's been killing Christians throughout the history? Do you realize the Baptist Church has adopted the Catholic Church ways? I call it Baptist Catholic. They have allowed the traditions and the celebration of a church that shed the blood of Christians into their assembly. Their thoughts, oh, there we go, are the thoughts of iniquity. There it is. There's your thinking. It's a sin. Imagine what the thoughts are when somebody's watching their their, their 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 computer. 
and they got pictures they ought not to be looking at. Or they got games that, you know, they're playing. Well, what kind of thoughts are they getting? Or the television show. Or the movies they go to. What are their thoughts? And Jesus said, if you're walking down the street and you look upon a woman who lusts after her in your heart, you're thinking about her. You're guilty of adultery. Imagine where you're guilty with murder. You're guilty with hating. You're guilty, though I've never done it physically, and yet through your thoughts, you're guilty. What the scriptures say. What the scriptures say. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. That's not good. Think about World War One, World War Two, when the planes and the tanks and the soldiers came. They go into a city. There is a city. It's fine. It's and when they get finished going through the city, it's destroyed. That's what the picture is. They're the way of peace. There's peace. They know not. The world wants peace, yet they don't even know what peace is. United Nations. We And how many wars have been since the United Nations? And the Pope gets down and kisses the ground. And, peace, peace, peace. And how many wars had that guy caused? In his church. <coughs> how many broken peace has there been a Christian to go into his family and tell, tell them about Jesus Christ? Tell them against the religion of their family about Jesus. I know that personally. You know, when they come up to farmers, oh, you know, we hate you. Listen, stand in line. My family hates me. My friends hate me. Christians hate me. Churches hate me. Because of the truth. Paul said, have I become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. And he wrote that to Christians. There is no judgment in their going. What's a good example of no judgment? It's a red light and they go flying right through it. They're not judging. You got to judge that traffic light. Red means stop. Yellow means step on it. And green means go. And there are people out there who don't know what the red means. That's improper judgment. There are people out there with improper judgment that, oh, if I'm pregnant, I'll abort the baby. That's improper judgment. Improper judgment for a guy to spend all his money on booze and never mind his wife and his children. That's improper judgment. Improper judgment is for a spouse to step out on, on the opposite sex against their spouse. Adultery. That's improper judgment. They have made them crooked paths. <laughs> Snake. Windy. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. You know why the people at the farmer's market, Daytona Beach, they have no peace? Because they have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Peace is the fruit of the Spirit. They rather be in their wicked ways. They rather do their wickedness. They don't want the truth. They don't want the Word of God. They don't want righteousness. They don't want light. You ain't going to get no peace. I guarantee somebody tonight, they're, they're sipping their beer and the, and the words of the gospel and, and, and the preacher are in their thoughts and in their heart, ruining their night. Therefore, is judgment far from us. Proper judgment. Just because a guy sits on the judge on, on the bench doesn't mean he's right and doesn't mean his judgment is right. Just as much just because a man stands behind a pulpit is he right. Neither does justice overtake us. If, just, if justice and judgment were proper, you would not have a government of the United States because they'd be all in jail today.
You say, why would they be in jail? Bouncing checks that the government don't have. It's illegal for the citizen to write rubber checks. The government is writing checks they don't have. That's illegal. And in America, if you write bounce checks, I know a couple people who have, you go to jail. If justice were correct, everybody that sits on Capitol Hill allows those checks to be written. They need to go to jail. Overtake us. We wait for light. No, you don't. Because Isaiah is speaking light, and they hate Isaiah. Jeremiah will bring light, and they put him in jail. And his own people want him dead. Elijah brought light, and Jezebel tried to kill her. Jesus brought light. Jesus is the light, and they gave him a cross. Paul brought the light, and they stoned him, and they whipped him, and they beat him, and he was put into jail, and he was beheaded. Philip, I believe Philip or Andrew, put forth the light, and they were tied to two horses, and their body was separated. But behold, obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. They don't. They don't want the truth. We grope for the wall like blind. And that, that's like in the middle of the night, you get up, you got to go to the bathroom. Or you're thirsty. And you're, it's dark. You're feeling around. Okay, where's that coffee table? Where's that chair? Where's the, ow! There it is. <laughs> and you're feeling around. Where's the wall? You don't want to run into anything. That's groping. We grope as we had no eyes. <clears throat> we stumble at noonday. That's where all the light is. As in the night. We are desolate places as dead men. Where there's the brightest sun of the day, they have no light. We roar all like bears and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment. No, you don't. If you look for judgment, you'd be on your knees pleading to God, oh God, I'm guilty. I'm... But there is none. For salvation. But it's far from us. Wait a minute. The Lord's hand is not shortening. It cannot save. It's your sin and your iniquity is separating you from God. Yeah, you want judgment. You want salvation. But you don't want to give up on your sin. And there are Christians that do that too. God save us. But allow us still to sin the sin we want to do. And God don't. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee. It just gets worse and worse and worse. And our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us. And as for our iniquities, we know that they know exactly what they're doing is wrong. They know exactly what their sins are. And they enjoy them. And they want them. They don't want to do right. And it's a sorry testimony that there are Christians that do that too. And it's even worse, sorry, that they are actually Christians who enjoy their sin and they think God's blessing them and God... Uh, no. It's quite possible the devil's blessing them to fool them. In transgressing and lying, there's that lying again. Now look, 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 look. Against the Lord. You know what's sorry? And it, this, maybe this is why the people at the farmer's market don't upset me. Is Paul killed Christians. Paul put Christians in prison. I would assume that Paul whipped Christians. And maybe beat them. Or had that authority against Christians. And on the road to Damascus. <coughs> when Jesus took him down to the ground. 
Jesus said to Paul, why persecutest thou me? Now, honestly, honestly, Paul had no persecution against Jesus. But when you mistreat and you lie to warning pastors that lie to the congregation, and you try to stop a Christian who's trying to do right, you try to hamper a Christian. You try to put a stumbling block before that Christian. And Jesus says, would you, would you do to me? Well, I didn't do it. I, I did it to that loud mouth man that comes every Saturday. No, no, no. You did it to me. You offended me, God speaking. I called that man, and that man, out uh, of the grace of his heart and for the loss of lost soul, went and gave up his time that he might tell you about me. And your filthy mouth cussed me out. Oh, oh Jesus, you weren't there. Yes, I was. And, and the, the proprietor and, and the and ruler of the farm and the vendors and the police department are all going to have to answer before God one day. You say, well, about the, the police officer that's a Christian and he's forced that he needs to quit his job and do right. I mean, the Bible says, I mean, you obey the, the laws that be, but where they cross the word of God, you got to do the word of God. And if, if the Bible says preach the, the gospel and you're told to, to stop that preaching the gospel and you're a Christian, you need to stop with your job and you need to step out and do what God told you to do. And when you lie to Christians, you're lying to God. There it is. And departing away from our God. Speaking oppression and revolt. And conceiving the uttering from the heart the words of falsehood. Your lies, my friend. God hears it. If you're a Christian, even if you're a Christian, the judgment is turned away backwards in the wrong way. You know why Lady Justice is blind today? She don't dare look at what's going on. She's ashamed to see what's going on. Justice stands afar off. The criminal has more rights than the victim in the American court system. And the police make one small mistake and then they're, they're set free. That's wrong. And a man guilty and a man that can say he's guilty and announce he's guilty and get a tricky dicky lawyer to get him off. There's going to be a lot of time spent in the great white throne judgment with American justice. For truths are falling in the street. There, there's where that expression comes from. And iniquity cannot enter. I mean, excuse me, and equity cannot enter. America is looking for justice. America is looking for justice. America is looking for... You ain't going to get it. You ain't going to get it when many of the people is going to get worse and worse are against the police force. Well, yeah, there are one or two bad cops. Okay, yes, there are. But there are also one or two ba bad black people. And I'm sorry to tell you, I've been in three prisons. There's a lot more black people in the prisons. And for every one bad cop, there's about two or three black people doing something to a white man that doesn't make the news. 
So that's the truth. Call me prejudiced, hate me, or whatever you want to do, but that's the truth. I've seen in the prisons where I have been prison, for every white man, there's about three or four black men in prison. You want to know the, 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 the religion? Catholic and Muslim populate our prisons. That's, hey, you got my words down. You heard what I said. I'm not prejudiced. It's the truth, but you don't want to hear the truth. The truth, yea, the truth is falleth. That departed from evil maketh himself a prey. The truth falleth. And he that departed from evil maketh the, the person that wants to get right, the person that does right, he becomes the enemy. Something wrong with that. When Paul got saved, already instantly, man, they had to load him out of the, out of the city in a basket because they were going to kill him. You know how many times that they had union meetings? I call them union meetings. That when they got together, they 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 converse. Say, how can we kill Jesus? How can we destroy Jesus? How can we get to what did Jesus do? And then there was one time they got together in their powwow. We got to kill Lazarus because a great testimony that Jesus resurrected him from the dead, and everybody's believing on Jesus. But we got to kill Lazarus. What did Lazarus do? <laughs> And I'll tell you right now, I got the public ministry in the farmer's market. I guarantee there are people right now, they're talking, how can we kill him? I guarantee it. What can we do to destroy him? We had a guy happy today. Ha, 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 they moved you. No, they didn't move me. I moved myself. And we're still preaching. The Lord saw it, and it displeased him, and there was no judgment. <laughs> All right, God, did you call fire down upon that person that, that called the police that wants us to stop? No. God, did, did, did you vaporize that man that cussed us out? No. I'm long-suffering. I'm not willing that any should perish. James and John say, Lord, you're going to call fire down. Whoa. You know, let me tell you something. The Jehovah Witnesses don't believe that Jesus is God. And Thomas said, my Lord, my God. And Jesus never rebuked that. But when James and John say, Lord, you're going to call fire down. Man, he turned around and rebuked him. And he saw that there was no man that and wondered there was no intercessor. Now, I got people who stood, one of the vendors stood up to the cops today for me. Therefore, his arm has brought salvation, and his righteousness, God, Jesus Christ, is sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and helmet of salvation of his head. Paul talks about this the Christian armor. And he put on a garment of vengeance for clothing. Not our garment of vengeance. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay, not the Christian. God will get, God will go, God will challenge, and God will take care of those that are guilty. Remember, Christian, we're guilty too. Wood, hay, or stubble. And clad the zeal of a coat. According to his deeds, according to he will repay. Revelation 20. They were judged by their works. The books were open. Fury his adversaries. Revelation 20. Recompense to his enemies. Revelation 20. To the islands he will repay recompense. And I don't understand the islands. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from west. His glory from the rising of the sun from west to east. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, Babylon, 
The, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. God sent Babylon to attack Israel because Israel is not... This whole, this whole chapter has been about Israel. God says, I'm going to send an enemy. I'm going to, I'm going to get your butt. I'm going to challenge you. And you're not going to like it. And many of these Jews are going to end up at the judgment seat, at the great white throne judgment. They're going to be found at fault. Second advent. And the Redeemer, capital R, Jesus Christ, shall come to Zion and unto the churn of the transgressions of Jacob, saith the Lord. And it will be, I will remember their transgressions no more. Their iniquity would I not remember. I will get into them a new heart. As for me, saith the Lord, this is my covenant with them, the Jews. Saith the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee, the Jews, my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor in the mouth of thy seed seed, saith the Lord, <coughs> from henceforth forever. And Jesus said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words shall never pass away. Sinners and iniquity will pass away into the lake of fire. 